بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله محمد وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته These were Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's people, his most hardened opponents. They were fully aware of his travels, movements and other actions. Yet they were totally unable to establish any learning contact between him and the people of knowledge in his own time. Nevertheless, the atheists of today, more than 13 centuries after his message, when all events have been determined and all accounts settled, persist in trying to establish such a connection. What is even more singular is that they try to find such a connection in historical garbage and in an area which his own people could not lower themselves to investigate. We tell them to spare themselves such efforts. The Quraysh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's tribe, had exhausted it long before them. Let them turn away from this area, for logic and history have shown that all such attempts are destined to miserable failure. If they persist, they should know that any doubt they, they should they should know that any doubt that is raised against the clear truth will be turned to the truth's advantage and favor. A worthless false allegation. Had the allegation that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam received all the knowledge contained in the Qur'an from a human teacher been an expression of an idea or a doubt felt by those who made it, they would have, felt, they would have held on it, to it without moving to something different. If the human mind were to try to explain the total break between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's life before receiving his message and after it, it will inevitably conclude that the, the new knowledge Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam expressed must have been imparted to him by fresh instruction. Since people do not know of any teacher on earth who are not human, the first thing that comes to mind is that there must be a man who has undertaken this fresh instruction and imparted its content to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Had there, e had there been even the slightest possibility that a, ma a person making such an allegation could find real or plausible factors which would give him even the slightest conviction within himself that this, is, this was even the case, he would, have, he, would, he would stick to it and would not seek a different explanation. But those who make such allegations continue, even to this day to be uncertain as to what to say about the Qur'an. Should they claim that it was taught to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by another man, or should they say that it is the product of his own intellect, as mentioned earlier, or should they combine the two claims together, describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as being taught and a madman, as the Qur'an reports in the verse 14 of Surah 44. The allegation that the Qur'an was taught to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by a human being was the least frequent argument employed by those who denied that the Qur'an was revealed by God. Instead, their most frequent argument was that it was self-inspiration, although they could not agree on what psychological condition experienced by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led to the production of the Qur'an and whether it was poetic inspiration madness or mere dreaming. Remember, all these arguments are reported in the Qur'an itself. They tried even angle and possibility, they tried every angle and possibility to come up with something to support their rejection of the message of the Qur'an. They did not stop at the limits that might reasonably be applied to serious speech like the, like, like the Qur'an or to a highly serious and wise mind like the Prophet ﷺ. They even considered the most extreme psychological conditions that produce human speech, whether the speaker is be rational or irrational. This is, 
This is clear evidence that they were not trying to prove an allegation they truly believed. They simply raised all possibilities and exhausted all options, overlooking all the defects therein. Basically, they were heedless of all improbability. They simply wanted to raise doubts in the minds of those who sought to know the truth and to learn the true faith. Jazakallahu khairan wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad. Bismillah. And they would have you hasten on the evil rather than the good when there have indeed occurred before them exemplary punishments. Truly your Lord is forgiving to humankind despite their evil doing and truly your Lord is severe in retribution. <clears throat> And he it is who accepts repentance from his servants and pardons evil deeds and knows what they do. And he answers those who believe and perform righteous deeds and he enhances them of his favor. As for the disbelievers, for them, for, uh, for them there will be a severe chastisement. And there are others who have confessed their sins. They have mixed right, a righteous deed with another that was, was bad. Um, it may be it may be that God will relent to them. Truly, God is forgiving, merciful. Take of their wealth some alms to purify them and to cleanse them thereby and pray for them. Truly, your prayers are a comfort for them. And God is hearer and knower. Uh, they, do they not know that God is he who accepts repentance from his servants and takes the voluntary alms and that God is he who is the relenting and the merciful? And why with one another hastening to forgiveness from your Lord and to a garden as wide as the heavens and the earth that has been prepared for those who fear, who expend in prosperity and adversity and restra restrain their rage and pardon their fellow men and God loves those who are virtuous. Mm. And who when they commit an, an indecency or wrong themselves, remember God and pray for forgiveness for their sins and who shall forgive sins but God, and who do not persist in what they did knowingly? Those, their requital is forgiveness from their Lord, and gardens beneath which rivers flow, abiding therein. Excellent is the wage of those workers. <laughs> Whoever does evil or wrongs himself and then prays for God's forgiveness, he shall find God for is forgiving, merciful. Say that God declares, O oh, my servants who have been pro prodigal against their own souls, do not despair of God's mercy. Truly God forgives all sins. Truly he is the forgiving, the merciful. And turn penitently to your Lord and submit to him before the chastisement comes, to, comes on you, whereupon you will not be helped. And follow the best of what has been revealed to you from your Lord before the chastisement comes on you suddenly while you are unaware. God forgives not that anything should be associated with him, but he forgives other than that to whomever he wills. Whoever associates anything with God, then he has indeed invented a tremendous sin. God does not forgive anything should be associated with him. God does not forgive that anything should be associated with him. He forgives all except that to whomever he will. Whoever associates anything with God, verily, he has strayed far away. Furthermore, human beings cannot but love God because he answers their prayers. If, if, mis if, if misfortune should be... If misfortune should befall man, he calls upon us lying on his side or sitting or standing. But when we have relieved him of his misfortune, he passes on as if he never called upon us because of a misfortune that befell him. So is, so is adorned for the prodigal to that which they do. <laughs> Nay, upon him you will call and he will remove that for which you call upon him if he wills, and you will forget what you associate with him. What grace you have, whatever grace you have, it is from God. Then when misfortune befalls you, to him you cry for help. Then when he has rid you of the misfortune, behold, a group of you attribute partners to, the Lord, to their Lord. Or he who answers the desperate one, 
when he calls to him and who removes his distress and makes you successors in the earth. Is there a God with God? Little do you remember. God even asks human beings to call upon him so that he will give to them. God says, do not covet that in which God has favored some of you above others. To men, a share from what they have earned, and to women, a share from what they have earned. And ask God of his favor. God is the know ever knower of all things. And your Lord has said, call on me and I will respond to you. Surely those who disdain to worship me shall enter hell utterly humiliated. Wasallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Bismillah Muhammad. During the Madani period, scribes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, regarding the Madani period, we have a wealth of information, including at present the names of approximately 65 companions who functioned as scribes for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at one time or another. <clears throat> Aban bin Said, Abu Umama, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Abu Hudayfa, Abu Sufyan, Abu Salama, Abu, -Abba, Abu, -Abba, Abu Abbas, Ubaid bin, bin Kaab, Al-Arqam, Usaid bin Al-Hudayr, Aus, Burayda, Bashir, Thabit bin Qais, Jafir bin Abi Talib, Jah Jaham bin Saad, Juhaym, Khatib, Hudayfa, Hussein, Hanzala, Huwaytib, Khalid bin Said, Khalid bin, bin Al Walid, Al Zubair bin Al Awam, Zubair bin Al Arqam, Zaid bin Thabit, Saad bin Ar Arabi, Saad bin Ubay Ubada, Sa Said bin Said, Shurahbil bin Hasna, Talha, Amir bin Fuhaira, Abbas, Abdullah bin Al Arqam, Abdullah bin Abi Bakr, Abdullah bin, Ro bin, bin Rawaha, Abdullah bin Zaid, Abdullah bin Said, Abdullah bin Saad, Abdullah bin Abdullah, Abdullah bin Amr, Uthman bin Affan, Uqba, Al-Ala, Al-Hadrami, Al-Ala bin Uqba, Ali bin Abi Talib, Umar bin Al-Khattab, Amr bin Al-As, Muhammad bin Maslama, Muadh bin Jabal, Muawiyah, Ma'an bin Adi, Mu'aykib, Mughira, Mundir, Muhajir, and Yazid bin Abi Sufyan radiallahu anhum. The Prophet, dictation, the Prophet wasallam's dictation of the Qur'an. Upon the descent of Wahi, the Prophet wasallam routinely called for one of his scribes to write down the latest verses. Zayd bin Thabit radiallahu anh, narrates that because of his proximity to the Prophet Wasallam's mosque, he was often summoned to, as scribe whenever the wahi commenced. When the verse pertaining to jihad was revealed, the Prophet Wasallam called on Zayd bin Thabit radiallahu anhu with ink pot and writing material, board or scapular bone, and began dictating. Amir bin al-Makhtoum al Ama, sitting nearby, inquired of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, What about me? For I am blind. And so came for those who are not among the disabled. There is also evidence of proofreading of the dictation. Once the task of recording the verses was complete, Zaid would read them back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ensure that no scribal errors had crept in. Recording the Qur'an as was very common among companions. The prevalence of this practice among the companions spurred the Prophet Wasallam to declare that no one should record anything from him save for the Qur'an. And whoever has written anything from me, from me other than the Qur'an should erase it. 
by which he meant that the Quranic and non-Quranic example hadith material must not be written on the same sheet so as to avoid any confusion. In fact, those who were unable to write often appeared in the mosque, vellum and parchment in hand, requesting volunteers who might record for them. Based on the total number of scribes and the Prophet Wasallam's custom of summoning them to record all new verses, we can safely assume that in his own lifetime, the entire Quran was available in written form. The, the arrangement of the Quran, <clears throat> the arrangement of verses within surahs. It is, common, it is commonly acknowledged that the arrangement of ayah, verses, and surahs, chapters in the Quran is unique. The layout does not follow the chronological, chronological order of revelation, nor does it follow subject matter. What secret lies behind this arrangement is best known to Allah, for it is his book. Now, if I play the unscrupulous editor and rearrange the words of someone else's book, changing the sequence of the sentences, etc., then altering the entire meaning of the book becomes tremendously easy. This end product cannot, can no longer be attributed to the original author, since only the author himself is entitled to change the wording and the material if the right if the rightful claim of authorship is to be preserved. <laughs>